So let's get started then. How do you create your successful and meaningful career? Well, I've outlined in the previous presentation that I'm going to talk you through the CV Cats framework. And first of all, we're going to start with the current state. So that's about what's going on for you um, at the moment. Um, and as you work through um, all of the exercises in the current state and in the vision stage, make sure that you start keeping a list of things that you want to have um, in your ideal future career. So I'm going to talk you through a number of exercises um, and these exercises are also in the accompanying workbook. Um, I'll outline the exercises here. The workbook has very clear instructions about what you need to do and the workbook also has some self-reflective questions um, to help you think about what you have done in the exercises. So um, I'll talk through the exercises here but then also go through the workbook, read the instructions there, um, follow um, the reflective questions and start keeping a list of what you want your ideal future career um, to contain. Um, some of the exercises um, that you will see will be um, kind of quite free-flowing and will require um, you to reflect on what you've done, whereas others are much more structured, sort of maybe questionnaires. Um, and you might find different ones um, preferable. Um, often if you're early on in your career, um, asking you a question about, you know, what have you done in your career to date, that might be quite um, a difficult question. So maybe if you're early on in your career, kind of some of the more structured things, the questionnaires that I'll point to, they might be more useful. Um, but if you're later on in the career, then the questionnaires that you do online might be very restrictive and you might prefer um, some of the more open exercises. So I've, I've included a, a range of different things because different people prefer different stuff. OK, so let's get going. Um, so the first exercise that you could do is you could do a timeline exercise. Um, and what's involved in this is you basically draw a line looking back at what's happened in your career. And the line goes up when things have been good, and then the line goes down when things have been less good. And again, this is a great exercise to do um, if you've got a number of years um, of career under your belt, because you can then really look back um, and see what happens. Um, here's some examples that I found um, on Google. Um, so, you know, different different lines go up and down. Some, some lines just go straight up. Um, usually there's a fair degree of variation. Um, and then when you do that exercise, you then begin to ask yourself, you know, OK, what was going on when things were good? Um, what circumstances do I need? What environment do I need? What needs to be in place for me to be at my best? Um, and when things haven't gone great, then again, you can look at that and say, OK, you know, what was going on there? And then you try and turn that around. OK, you know, this wasn't great. What do I need instead um, for me to thrive and for me to succeed? And again, as I said in the workbook, there are some questions to help you reflect. Perhaps a related exercise would be peak moments. So in the timeline, there were bits when you were at the top of the timeline and those might be also peak moments. Um, so you could you could do the timeline, but you could specifically think, OK, you know, let's find three aspects of my career that where things have been just absolutely brilliant. And then you can spend some th time thinking about those um, um, those times and say, OK, what was going on? What was in place? What skills what was I using? What behaviours? What values? Um, what strengths? What was in place um, when things were absolutely brilliant? So the timeline exercise is something that looks back um, at your life, whereas the life inventory is a kind of cross-sectional area. So that's about what's going for you at the moment but in the different domains of your life, yeah? So, you know, we've got career, education, skills, workplace, relationship, friends, family, um, love and intimacy, physical health, psychological health, play, rest and recreation. Um, you could add your own different life domains. Um, and then in this exercise, you are asked to assess yourself on a scale of one to 10, to what degree are you being the kind of person um, that you want to be? And then, you know, you can look at that and see how things are. Um, for example, if there's something that is very low, you might think, you know, OK, this is something that I need to address. But you might be thinking, you know, oh, I need, really need to work on my um, career. But if, for example, your workplace relationships, you score yourself two for workplace relationship and, you know, career is at four, then you might say, well, actually, perhaps the workplace relationships might be an issue. 
Um, now that might mean that that it's the workplace relationships that are causing issues with your career or the other way around of course you've then got to tease that out but it's worth looking at all of the domains in your life and saying you know where are the issues where do i need to start where is the most opportunity for improvement and likewise if something is really good and something's really bad you can then say okay how can the good things help me develop the things that are not great. So again, for example, you know, if you score really highly on friends, family and society, but you're not very good on the career um, aspect, you can then say, okay, how can friends, family and society help me support um, my career? So we're moving on to the questionnaire based again, you know, for some of you, you will have loved those kind of free flowing exercises. Some of you will want something that's much more structured. Um, and in the accompanying workbook, there's a link to a free online questionnaire um, that will give you the vocational personality. Um, and that's something that was developed by Holland and Holland posed that, that, that all of us will tend to split ourselves into six different personality types or people split themselves into six different personality types. Um, most of us probably will have, you know, one or two that we work with um, or, you know, possibly more. But typically there's probably going to be a couple of things that each one of us um, will be um, predominant on. And you do an online questionnaire. Um, as I said, I've posted to, to a free one, but th there's probably other ones that you can find as well if you Google it. Um, and you answer questions um, and then um, you will find um, a um, then it'll tell you which of the six categories you sit in. Um, and again, you know, the six categories, sometimes they have different names, but fundamentally the concept of Holland is there are six predominant personality types and most of us will probably, you know, sit within a couple. So what are those personality types? Um, so we've got the realistic personality. So these are these are people that like mechanical things, tool and objects, and they particularly like working with things much more than people. Um, we've got conventional personality types. So these are people who like organizing, they like math, they like administration, um, and they tend to work with words and numbers much more than people and ideas. We've got the enterprising personality. So these are people that like leadership, influence and politics, and they like working with people and ideas more than with things. We've got the investigative personality. So this is for people who like complexity. They often like working alone. They like the idea of working with ideas much more than people or things. We've got artistic personality. So that's about creating original work. And these people like ideas more than things. And then we've got the social personality type. And this is about valuing relationship and helping others and making a difference. Um, and then here they particularly prefer working with people more than they enjoy working with things. So let's move on to strengths then. Um, so I produced a list of strengths here. So again, you know, if you like structure, there's a list of strengths here. You can go through that and you can say, am I good at these things? You know, yes or no. And, you know, you go down through that list and say, yes, I'm good at this or no, I'm not good at that. Um, you might also want to ask, is this something that I want to be good at? A kind of a third category. Um, so not a strength that you currently have, but something that you might want to develop. So that can be quite useful as well. Um, but let's work with the idea of, yes, I am good at this or no, I'm not good at that. Um, and of course, by this stage, you've done a number of other exercises. So there was probably some things that you've identified in the previous exercises, stuff that you're good at. And you might want to add um, those things onto this list as well. You might, of course, want to spend some time reflecting on yourself, saying, what is it that I'm good at? Or better still, ask the people around you and say, you know, ask, ask maybe sort of seven, eight, ten people around you to say, what are the three things that I'm really good at? And then you can add that to this list as well. When it comes to strengths, though, um, it's important to not just know what you're good at, 
but also to split them into stuff that's energizing and stuff that's draining. Yeah, I've already talked about the desired strengths as well. So this is your development, your learning edge, um, but stuff that you are good at, split that into things that are energizing and things that are draining. And what I mean by that is there'll be things that you're good at and you can carry on doing it, you know, all night long. Um, everybody else wants to go home, but you're still there. You still want to carry on doing it. And it just it just makes you buzz and it brings you alive. Yeah. So that will be something that is energizing for you. My guess is that you're also going to have things that are draining. So that will be things that you're good at. But actually, you know, once you're done and dusted, then you're quite happy um, to put it down um, and say, Do you know what? Yes, I'm good at that. I've done a really good job, but now I've had enough. And maybe if I give you my example, for example, you know, if it comes to, to, to interacting with people or doing anything that's learning and development related, you know, that for me is super exciting and I can talk about it, I can do it long after everybody else is well and truly fed up. Um, a draining one for me would be, for example, writing guidelines and getting consensus on a guideline. And again, I'm really good at that, or at least I hope I am. I think I write a really good guideline. But to be honest, I find it quite quite knackering. So by the time that, that I've managed to get everybody involved and, you know, I've sent a thousand emails and we had lots of consultation, I'm glad when it's all over. I've done a really good job. Yeah. So, you know, I do write a good guideline. Um, but at the end of it, I'm, I'm happy that it's all over. Yeah. And of course, when it comes to your career, ideally, you want to fill your career with things that is energizing, because if you pick a career based on the fact that you're good at stuff, but that stuff is draining, then actually you're going to spend all your time drained. Yeah, of course, all of us have draining stuff in our careers, but ideally you want to pick stuff that is predominantly energizing, maybe a little bit of the draining strength, but you want to align your career with the kind of stuff that makes you come alive. So that's it for um, current state. Um, in the next um, presentation, we're going to move on to vision for the future.